Hey and welcome to Trail Trials, the video review section of irunfar.com. My name is Travis Lyles and in this video we're going to take a look at the Speed Goat One One 5. So let's start off by the specs. The Speed Goat 5 is the fifth iteration of the Speed Goat and probably in terms of changes the biggest departure that we've had since the Speed Goat moved from version 1 to version 2. 4 to 5 is enough of an update that I think it goes beyond just kind of the basics that we've seen in the previous versions. We have a new upper, slightly different midsole, and they've updated a bit of the traction in the tread pattern on here. So with all that said, this is a four millimeter drop from heel to toe. It weighs in slightly lighter at 10 and a half ounces. It's meant for rugged terrain. It's meant for a little bit of everything. I've got thousands of miles on the speed goats over the last handful of years. So I feel pretty good about what I'm about to say here. So let's get up close and personal and check it out. All right, let's start off by talking about the outsole. So in general, you've got a Vibram Mega Grip outsole. This outsole is what you've seen for the most part in all of the previous versions of Speed Goat. So the lug pattern is roughly the same. You have your forward facing lugs for going uphill. There are some rear facing lugs in that midfoot area where if you are running downhill, you're more than likely gonna be on that forefoot. So you've got some sort of lugs that are backwards to catch some braking. You transition to the heel part of the shoe and you have your rear facing lugs for more of that slower type of climbing slash braking that you're going to want from the heel pattern. In general, I think this is a really good all purpose type of, of tread pattern. It works on dry, it works on wet, it works on wet bridges, it works on the road. It just sort of gets out of the way and does the job. Um, it creates enough friction on slick areas that it doesn't slide all over the place like some trail shoes that I have uh, while also not being so sticky and soft that it wears down over time. So really good general purpose type of outsole that just works in a lot of conditions. From a protection standpoint, there's no rock plate. You're really counting on the thickness of the midsole to absorb impact, to absorb shock, uh, and to hopefully deflect or be able to absorb any long pointy object that might pierce the underside of the shoe because all of this seafoam green area here are exposed foam and I can just say in general I've not ever had a problem where I've had something so sharp and so long that it was able to pierce in beyond the sock liner or even really all the way through the midsole uh, and again I've worn these shoes in a lot of different conditions so overall if you like the previous version of the speed goat and the tread pattern and the and the compound you're not going to have any complaints on this version if you're new to the speed goat it's going to work well in a lot of conditions the one thing i will note that is different here is if you look at these lugs you'll notice a little bit of this like spiky stuff all over the place those are lugs on the lugs and the goal here is to create even more surface area for traction. That is an update that did not exist on the previous version of the Speed Goat. Can't say one way or the other if that also means it traps more mud on the bottom. I haven't really noticed that, but uh, just something cool I think that's going on here from a technology standpoint. All right, let's move up to the midsole. Now this midsole looks a little bit different. Again, I'll kind of pull in my, my previous version Speed Goat here and it's a little less shiny, it's more matte colored. The design language is a little more in line with Hoka's road shoes than the previous version of the Speed Goat. And this midsole is slightly, ever so slightly softer than the four. And this is a midsole compound that was available in the Speed Goat Evo. And there are a couple of, of similarities really between this shoe and that shoe. So if you were a fan of the Speed Goat Evo midsole, versus the Speed Goat 4, this is gonna be a nice update for you. What I can say is that in general practice, I do notice it to be a little bit softer feeling. And it's only in certain scenarios do I notice that that's the case, but for the most part, it just feels like a good, well-cushioned midsole that provides plenty of cushion, plenty of protection, it's good if you want to go slow. It's good if you want to go fast. Even though it's tall, it doesn't feel tipsy. It just really works well and is kind of 
you know, it's flexible enough. It's not super stiff. It just works. In general, it is a single density midsole foam all the way around. So there's no blockers, there's no, you know, cages, there's nothing like that really doing anything uh, to change your gait or to provide pronation types of control. Single density foam, note, it's just a little bit softer. All right. So now let's move on to the upper. And if I was to say, what is the one thing that is the most different that people are going to notice in the Speed Goat 5? It's the upper. So back to that Evo Speed Goat comment from earlier, this shares a lot of that type of upper. So that was a more stretchy, more fabric, less overlay type of upper. And that's exactly what's going on here. So from an upper standpoint, it's a lot of engineered mesh. In the previous versions, the Speed Goats had a whole lot of overlays on the upper. From the toe, from the midfoot, all around the shoe was kind of this slick, plasticky type of, of material that created structure on the shoe. And you can see it all the way back to here. You can see all this black that's on this part of the shoe, back at the heel, is all this like rubbery overlay stuff and that is all gone on this newer version for the most part i think the comfort overall is great when you step into this shoe you kind of feel like wow my foot can kind of relax and and spread out and sort of fit into the shoe where it needs to whereas that previous version of the shoe maybe you stepped into it and if your foot was a little bit wide to the outside like mine is this area can come sometimes feel a little tight or this area feels a little loose and you kind of have to do some messing with it. This upper feels a little more like it just sort of molds to what your foot is. And again, that's really because it's, it's all just this engineered mesh across the whole shoe. From a toe standpoint, another thing I always complained about on the previous versions were this area down here and that has been removed. Again, going from that Evo Speed Goat, this is now replaced with some really stretchy, kind of elasticy, thick material here. And it's sort of what you don't notice, I think is what I like about this. And it's that before there was this artificial sort of plastic sitting over that my toe seemed to rub against and it didn't really give. And over time it didn't loosen up because it was this weird hard plastic stuff. This sort of lets my foot do what it needs to. If I'm going downhill, I don't feel like the top of the shoe is creating some sort of weird plasticky thing on top of it. My toes can splay out, my foot can move around. There's just a little bit of relief that happens in that area that didn't exist in the Speed Goat 4. Moving towards the heel, continuing on that design language that looks a lot like what their road shoes are. Here's this little tip back here. I don't know what the purpose is other than aesthetics. Um, but I can say when I wear really low socks, I feel like more stuff kind of travels into the back of my shoe. If I wear taller socks, it doesn't become a problem, but just a, just a thing to note. Overall, the heel fit is pretty good. Um, I think one of the things that is different is the topmost eyelet doesn't sit back quite as far as the previous version did, so or quite as high, or it's just oriented a little bit different. So for the most part, I think the heel is pretty close, if not just a touch looser than what was in for my foot, the previous version. And I think if I was really, really concerned about it, I could pop another hole right here uh, and, and customize it to fit. I think most people are gonna be fine with the heel fit on this shoe. So let's talk about this lacing. And because of the lack of the cage or the overlays that were on the previous version, you'll note that this is really tight. And that's because of the comment that I made. This upper is a lot more flexible. And because of that, to get a really good fit, you gotta kinda pull it down tight. I was almost out of room in terms of locking this down to my foot. Before, you sorta had these overlays that could create a little bit of tension right here, a little bit of tension right here, a little bit of tension right here, so you didn't have to go quite as tight, case in point. This is how much room I had left on the Speed Goat 4 to tighten down more. And this is how much room I have left on the Speed Goat 5. It's a more generous fitting upper, so you really have to crank it down to get a secure fit if that's what you're looking for. In closing, if you were a Speed Goat wearer before, this isn't going to feel that much different. However, if you're someone that has a narrow foot, 
this is gonna be a problem. I don't have a super wide foot in general terms. All my shoes are, are standard width and there aren't any of those that I'm kind of at this level where I'm almost out of, of room to lock the shoe down anymore. And going down a half size, the shoe would be too short for me. So that's just something that you're gonna have to look out for. I like to update the change here. They got rid of that stuff. You can see some design language here that's a little bit different, but overall, if you're a Speed Goat fan, I think you're gonna be pleased with this. It's less constrictive, a little bit lighter. I think there's all the things that you're hoping that this shoe just continues to chip away at and get better at. You just gotta watch out for those narrow laces. So, any questions, comments, thoughts, Leave those in the post below. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.